Hey everyone, welcome to day 231 in our Bible in a Year Plus podcast. Today we are in the book of Jeremiah and Jeremiah is going to write a letter to captives in Babylon and tell them what they should do now as captives. I had an old book in my library for many years that told the true story of a married couple from the 1800s. The wife was a sweet Christian, but her husband was a bully and a hard drinker. One time after a long night of drinking, the husband brought home his buddy uh, in the middle of the night and he was boasting to his buddy that his Christian wife would do anything he ever told her to do. So to prove it, he rudely awakened his wife when they walked through the door and demanded that she get out of bed and make them up some coffee and not only that, then uh, stir up some some food for them. And the uh, young wife, to the astonishment of her uninvited guest, did all of these things cheerfully. At some point in this whole evolution, the husband dismissed himself from the room to take care of something for a couple of minutes. And so the house guest and the young wife were alone together. And the house guest asked this Christian woman why she did this. Why why did she allow her husband to treat her so rudely and to bully her? You know, why didn't she fight back or escape? And then the wife very sympathetically explained that she did this because she knew her husband was not a Christian and that he would someday soon, you know, after a short life here on earth, he would someday soon die and go to hell. And she just wanted to give him at least some happiness while he was still here in this world because surely he wouldn't have any happiness in the world to come. Well, today we're going to read about how Jeremiah instructs these Jewish people who have gone into captivity in Babylon and how he tells them to calmly rebuild their lives and to fly under the radar and do the best they can and pray for the peace of the people surrounding them, their Babylonian neighbors, because that was their best shot at peace in this world too for the next 70 years. So today, Jeremiah chapter 28 in the King James Version of the Bible with updated vocabulary came to pass the same year in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year, in the fifth month, that Hananiah, the son of Azer, the prophet, which was of Gibeon, spoke to me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of of the priests and all the people, saying, Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two full years I will bring again into this place all the vessels of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried them to Babylon. And I will bring again to this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, with all the captives of Judah that went into Babylon, declares the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Then the prophet Jeremiah said to the prophet Hananiah, in the presence of all the priests, in the presence of all the people that stood in the house of the Lord, even the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen, the Lord do so. The Lord perform your words which you have prophesied to bring again the vessels of the Lord's house and all that is carried away captive from Babylon into this place. Nevertheless, hear now this word that I speak in your ears and in the ears of all the people. The prophets who have been before me and before you from old time prophesied both against many countries, against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of plague. The prophet who prophesies of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord has truly sent him. Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke from off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and broke it. And Hananiah spoke in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus declares the Lord, Even so I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon from the neck of all nations within the space of two full years. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, after Hananiah the prophet had broken the yoke from off the neck of Jeremiah the prophet, saying, Go and tell Hananiah, thus declares the Lord, You have broken the yokes of wood, but you shall make for them yokes of iron. For thus declares the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these nations, so that they will serve Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. And I have given him the beasts of the field also. Then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, but you make these people to believe, uh, to trust in a lie. Therefore, thus declares the Lord, See, I will cast you from off the face of the earth. This year you shall die, because you have taught rebellion against the Lord. So Hananiah the prophet died that same year in the seventh month. Chapter 29. 
Now, these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem unto the remnant of the elders who were carried away captive, and to the priests, and to the prophets, and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon, after Je- Jeconiah the king, and the queen, and the eunuchs, and the princes of Judah, and Jerusalem, and the carpenters, and the smiths had departed from Jerusalem. Uh, sent by the hand of Elasa, the son of Shaphan, and Gemariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent unto Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, saying, Thus declares the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all who are carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take wives and father sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that you may be increased there and not diminished. And seek the peace of this city where I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it, uh, for in the peace of it you shall have peace. For thus declares the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your diviners that are in the midst of you deceive you, neither listen to your dreams which you cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. For thus declares the Lord, that after 70 years are accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, declares the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Then you shall call upon me and you shall go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, declares the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity and I will gather you from all the nations, from the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place from where I cause you to be carried away captive because You have said, the Lord has raised up prophets in Babylon. Know that this declares the Lord, the king, who sits upon the throne of David and of all the people who dwell in this city and of your brothers and have not gone forth, uh, that have not gone forth into captivity. Thus declares the Lord of hosts, see, I will send upon them a sword, the famine, the pestilence, and will make them like vile figs that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. And I will persecute them with the sword and with the famine and with the plague and will deliver them to be removed to all the kingdoms of the earth to be a curse and an astonishment and a hissing and a reproach among all the nations where I have driven them. Because they have not listened to my words, declared the Lord, uh, which I have sent unto them by my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them. But you would not hear, declares the Lord. Hear, therefore, the word of the Lord, all you of the captivity whom I have sent from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus declares the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, of Ahab, the son of Kaliah, and Zedekiah, the son of Maaseiah, uh, who prophesy a lie unto you in my name. See, I will deliver them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall kill them before your eyes. And from them shall be taken up a curse by all the captivity of Judah, which are in Babylon, saying, The Lord make you like Zedekiah and like Ahab, whom the king of Babylon roasted in the fire, because they have committed villainy in Israel and have committed adultery with their neighbor's wives and have spoken lying words in my name, which I have not commanded them. Even I know and am witness, declares the Lord, Thus so you also speak to Shemaiah, the Nehalamite, saying, Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, Because you have sent letters in your name unto all the people that are at Jerusalem, and to Zephaniah, the son of Maaseiah, the priest, and to all the priests, saying, The Lord has made you priest in the place of Jehoiada, the priest, so that you should be officers in the house of the Lord. And every man that is mad and makes himself a prophet, you should put him in prison and in the stocks. Now, therefore, why have you not reproved Jeremiah of Anatoth, who makes himself a prophet to you? For therefore he sent unto us in Babylon, saying, This captivity is long, build houses and dwell in them, and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. And Zephaniah the priest read this letter in the ears of Jeremiah the prophet. Then the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah, saying, Send to all those of the captivity, saying, Thus declares the Lord concerning Shemaiah the Nehalamite, because Shemaiah has prophesied unto you, and I did not send him, and he caused you to trust in the lie. 
Therefore, thus declares the Lord, see, I will punish Shemaiah the Nanhalamite and his seed. He shall not have a man to dwell among this people, neither shall he behold the good that I will do for my people, declares the Lord, because he has taught rebellion against the Lord. Chapter 30. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speaks the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write all the words that I have spoken unto you in a book. For see, the days come, declares the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, declares the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. And these are the words that the Lord spoke concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus declares the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask now, and see, whether a man travails with child. Why do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail? And all faces are turned pale. Alas, for that, that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, declares the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off the, your neck and will burst your bonds and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Therefore, do not be afraid, O my servant Jacob, declares the Lord. Neither be frightened, O Israel, for see, I will save you from afar and your seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. For I am with you, declares the Lord, to save you. Though I make a full end of all nations where I have scattered you, yet I will not make a full end of you, but I will correct you in measure and will not leave you altogether unpunished. For thus declares the Lord, your bruise is incurable and your wound is grievous. There is no one to plead your cause so that you may be bound up, uh, that uh, you have no healing medicines. All your lovers have forgotten you, and they do not seek you. For I have wounded you with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of your iniquity, because your sins were increased. Why do you cry for your affliction? Your sorrow is incurable for the multitude of your iniquity. Because your sins were increased, I have done these things to you. Therefore, all those who devour you shall be devoured. And all your adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity, and they shall plund uh, and they who pl who plunder you shall be plundered, and all who prey upon you I will give for a prey, for I will restore health unto you, and I will heal you of your wounds, declares the Lord, because they called you an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeks after. Thus declares the Lord, See, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents, and have mercy on his dwelling places, and the city shall be built upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner of it, and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of those who are merry, and I will multiply them, and they shall not be few, I will also glorify them, they shall not be small. Their children also shall be as before, and their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all who oppress them." and their nobles shall be from among themselves, and their governor shall proceed from the midst of them, and I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach me. For who is this who has engaged his heart to approach me, declares the Lord? And you shall be my people, and I will be your God. See, the whirlwind of the Lord goes forth with fury, a continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he has done it, until he has performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you shall consider it. And that concludes Jeremiah chapter 30. We began in chapter 28 then with a duel, a duel between the prophets, uh, Jeremiah against Hananiah. Hananiah is a false prophet. By the way, Hananiah is a very common name in scripture. Somebody has counted 14 Hananiahs in the Bible. Uh, this Hananiah is unique here to Jeremiah. He's a false prophet. And so the prophets are having an argument, a debate, and there is a further object lesson with the yoke. So you remember that that, uh, Jeremiah already, yesterday we talked about this, he was told by the Lord to make a yoke, a handmade um, 
rod of some kind and some leather straps as if you were tying an animal to another animal uh, across the neck. And, and Jeremiah was supposed to wear this yoke. Well, Hananiah, the false prophet, goes up to this wooden handmade yoke that Jeremiah has on his neck and he breaks it. And he says, thus says, says the Lord, uh, the Lord is going to um, bring back all the captives in two years. Well, so you see the problem. Uh, Jeremiah said it'd be 70 years. Hananiah says two years. And the question is, is this yoke, you know, weak and it can be broken like a handmade wooden yoke or is it strong like an iron yoke? And that's what happens in chapter 28, verse 15. Then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah, the prophet, hear now, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, but you are making these people to trust in a lie. And the Lord says, yeah, you, you can break the wooden yoke that... Um, Jeremiah has been wearing. You can do that, but all you're doing is making an iron yoke for these people, and you can never break the iron yoke, and that's the future. And then the Lord is upset with Hananiah, so Jeremiah tells Hananiah, and you're going to die this year because of what you've done here in making the people trust a lie, a false prophecy. And sure enough, Hananiah did die two months later. Chapter 29, verses 5 through 7, talk about this very important letter that Jeremiah sends to the captives in Babylon. That would include Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and, and Daniel, and the royals who were uh, deported uh, earlier. And so now the royals and Daniel and company are saying, well, what should we do here? And if it's going to be two years, like Hananiah said, just two years in captivity, well, you know, we're just going to hang out for two years and we get to go back home. But Jeremiah says it's not going to be two years. It's going to be 70 years. So here's what you should do. You should build houses, make your houses nice, and you should plant gardens and eat from your garden. And don't say, well, you know, we're not going to have any children in this land because this is a terrible place. Instead, uh, if you're of a marriageable age, go ahead and get married and go ahead and have children and even have grandchildren because you're going to be here 70 years. And besides that, verse 7 says, and seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captives and pray to the Lord for it. For in the peace of that city, you shall have peace. And this is so good because it's, it's telling the Jewish people in captivity, you're going to be there a long time. Just rebuild your lives and find whatever peace you can there. And by the way, this is what Jewish people have been doing for all of these centuries since the time of Jeremiah. Jewish people have been scattered all around in the various nations of the world. And if they were in Germany or if they were in Poland or if they're here in the United States, they just build their lives and, and carry on. And so this is what Jeremiah told them to do. And we're going to come back to that at the end. In chapter uh, 29, verse 10, notice there is a reiteration here that it's not going to be too years of captivity, as Hananiah the false prophet said, it's going to be 70 years. And so once again, um, Jeremiah is making that perfectly clear for all of us. In chapter 29, verse 11, we have this wonderful verse, and a lot of people consider this to be their life verse or their favorite verse in the whole Bible. And it is a wonderful verse. It says, uh, the Lord speaking to his people, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, declares the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end or a future hope. So here's the idea uh, that uh, people in captivity think, oh no, you know, it's going to be like this forever. There's no hope. And the Lord says, oh yes, there is too hope. I know the thoughts that I have for you. I have peaceful thoughts for you. Thoughts of a future hope. These are the thoughts. So this is beautiful. Now, remember that there's a time frame here. For the Lord, it's a 70-year window of captivity, and then good thoughts, peace, prosperity, and a wonderful future. So that's what the Lord is thinking. We can apply this to our lives because in our situation, um, the Lord has also planned peace for us and a, a wonderful future hope for us, an expected end, a wonderful expected end. He's prepared that for all believers. The only tricky thing is it might not be relief five years from now, or as in the case of Israel and Judah, 70 years from now. It might not be relief in this lifetime at all. It might be only in eternity. But if you keep that in mind, this is a great verse. It might then need to be tempered a little bit if it's being used as like a, a graduation address, a commencement address to high school students. Well, don't worry. In the next five years, the Lord has planned for you prosperity and peace and everything's going to be great. 
when in fact life might be pretty hard for the next five years. For the believer, the assurance here is for eternity. The Lord is going to give us a happy ending. All right, so that brings us to chapter 29, verses 13 and 14. And this is so great. Once again, the Lord says, And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart, and I will be found of you. And once again, he's talking specifically to the captives. He said, I'll turn away your captivity. I'll gather you from the nations, bring you back into your own land. And, you know, that's the future for these people. But remember, in episode 140, we talked about the importance of seeking the Lord, this tremendous biblical principle to seek the Lord, because if you seek him, you will find him. And that's so great. And we told you at that time that there are 10 other passages of scripture that say exactly the same thing about seeking the Lord. You have to seek the Lord. If you want to find the Lord in your life, you will find him, but you do have to expend a little effort, a little study, a little prayer. Seek the Lord and you will find him. Chapter 30, verses 7 through 11. And now, once again, this is going to be very futuristic. It has historical application in what was taking place with Babylon and the kingdoms of the world, but it has a very futuristic sound as well. Here's, here's what we read. Chapter 30, verses 7 through 11. Verse 7, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. Well, there are lots of days, like the wars that took place in Babylon and in Jerusalem, in the Middle East, lots of days like that. But this one says, this, this day is great, that day. And once again, we see that day, right? Uh, yeah, bells, whistles, sirens, and red lights flashing. You know, there's, there's very likely going to be an end times nuance to this. So alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even a time of Jacob's trouble, and he shall be saved out of it. It shall come to pass in that day. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, I'll break his yoke and um, do not be afraid, O my servant Jacob. Oh, oh, and it says, and they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king. That's verse nine. They'll serve David their king. Serve David their king. Well, David lived a thousand BC. We're in 600 BC. David died 400 years ago. How are they going to serve David their king in the future? But remember, according to Matthew chapter eight, verse 11, The resurrection of the Old Testament saints will occur in the end times. And so Jesus said, I say to you that many shall come from the east and west and sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, right here on planet earth, uh, where the Messiah kingdom is set up. And they're going to sit with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they're also going to sit with David. And so it says, and when that day comes, no one shall make Israel afraid. That's again, uh, verse 10. And so this is like what happened in history, but we're being you know, projected, we're being you know, launched way past history here and into the time that we would call future even to our day, the end times. All right, and what should be our great life lesson today? Chapter 29, verse 7 says, Seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captives and pray to the Lord for it, for in the peace of that city you shall have peace. And this just reminds us that the Lord sometimes places us in oppressive circumstances with unpleasant people. That is, you might feel captive like the captives in Babylon. You might feel this way uh, because you're trapped with unpleasant people, maybe trapped in an unpleasant family situation, maybe trapped with co-workers that you don't prefer to be around, or trapped in a government situation in other countries especially, but he, even here in the U.S., trapped in, in a government that you, you uh, cannot extricate yourself from, or among neighbors. And it would not be possible or perhaps possible, but not wise or godly or appropriate for us to do what it takes to extricate ourselves, that is to fight back or to escape. And that's just not feasible for the family situation we're in or the government situation we're in or the job situation we're in. We we really can't extricate ourselves. And sometimes Jeremiah's word to you in that situation where you're trapped is just this, stay calm, build your life as well as you can, fly under the radar, don't upset people, and uh, pray for the peace of your oppressors, uh, the peace of those people around you. Because if they stay calm and tranquil, it will go better for you. So pray for their peace because if they're calm, you can have some calmness, uh, some sort of tranquility in your life. It's your best shot at maximum happiness. And so Jeremiah's word to the captives is really important. If you feel trapped where you are and it's not feasible or righteous for you to remove yourself, then just 
you know, build a new life for yourself, fly under the radar, pray for peace, and carry on. And that should be our prayer. Uh, to actually pray today for strength to rebuild as well as we can when we are trapped in a certain situation. It is not feasible or possible or righteous for us to get out of it. If we're trapped, then we're going to rebuild life as well as we can and pray for peace and calm among those who might otherwise wish to harm us. And so I hope you'll pray in your heart as I pray out loud, asking the Lord to help us rebuild if we are captives. Father God, this is true. Uh, sometimes we're just trapped. We, we can't leave this family. We can't leave this neighborhood. We can't leave this job. We can't leave this government. We're trapped. And so, Lord, if that's the case for anybody listening to us right here now, I pray that um, as we commit to you our lives, uh, we will follow, as, as Jeremiah said, we're just going to rebuild the best we can. And we're, we're going to fly under the radar and be calm. And we're going to pray for the tranquility of the people around us because if they stay calm, it helps us. So, Lord, we're praying for them. Give us strength to rebuild and please bring calm to the people who might otherwise harm us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, okay. God bless you. Thank you for studying with me on day 231 of our Bible in a Year Plus podcast. And I sure hope I get to see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.